Good morning, folks. We've got space weather, climate science, and another expanded look at the severity of the 1,500-year cycle. But first, there needs to be a little observer spanking. This doesn't apply to most of you, but for those who need it, here it comes. People freaked out about my reaction to getting the stream to work last night, saying I flashed the 666 symbol. First of all, no. This means, okay. It's meant, okay, for decades and everyone knows that. Second, even for those of you reaching deep into the bowels of conspiracy, it's got to be the other hand, genius. Stop acting crazy. Now on to the sun. We had seen the sun enter a bit of quiet in defiance of the number of active regions and plasma filaments. We still have quiet solar wind and geomagnetic conditions as of this morning, but we also just got the first M-class flare in more than a day. Coming from the central northern active region, as you can see the flash here in 131 angstroms. It was impulsive, didn't produce a CME. In fact, the only CME activity of note across the entire sun occurred top right as the filament erupted. We'll continue to watch the Earth-facing sunspots today and the southern filaments as they begin to depart. But let's quickly look back on the solar wind from the last couple of days, and we can see that the combined coronal hole stream and CME that hit at the end of last week and into the weekend was the fastest solar wind of the last year. It's a prime signal. Once again, we are at sunspot maximum. Some quick climate notes up next. Yet another confirmation that Earth is greening. There is no downside to this fact, and it remains a critically important thing to remember in our changing world right now. CO2 is plant food, and plants like warmth. Who knew? Wanted to share this with everyone who continues to claim that the entire United States is about to be under ice after the next iteration of the disaster cycle. Well, this was the extent of the Laurentide ice sheet. And in addition to its latitudinal extent, look at how it preferred the east side of the continent. Look at Alaska. This is not so simple, folks, and requires a much more nuanced approach to our understanding of the deposition of ice and snow. We also just recently saw a story about a 10 degree shift in Dansgaard Oeschger cycles. Well, how about 16 degrees in as little as a decade? These DO events, which have cascading impacts globally, must be taken against the one degree of warming over the last 150 years to realize that modern changes are meaningless and virtually nothing by comparison to the disaster cycles. Folks, the Observer Review e-magazine is now open for subscription. As with every single one of our publications ever, you can get a discount by signing up early. Link is below, and we expect the first volume to be sent out middle of the month. We also have our new store. There's Observer gear of various kinds. There are some that are specifically designed to provoke conversations about things like the pole shift, the solar micronova, and the disaster cycle as a whole. And of course, we have the snowflake melting designs for those of you who want to flaunt it as well guaranteed to raise eyebrows in all big cities. Link to that is also found below. We greatly appreciate your support. Again, the links to the new store, our new publication, and much, much more are found below the video. Subscribe, and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.